Salah everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Poco M4 Pro and the Poco X4 Pro 5G. Both of them just announced at MWC 2022 and of course featuring uh, very budget-minded devices that provide us a lot of bang for the buck. We're going to cover all of their new features and obviously cover some of the new unique features that come with these devices. This is TK and these are the Poco M4 and X4 Pro. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have both phones. Uh, the Poco X4 Pro is a 5G device and a really interesting design here on the back where it looks like almost like lights are shooting, making X's here on the back. Definitely very nice. The primary sensor on the back, as you can see right there, 108 megapixels. Now the M4 Pro, if it sounds like we've seen a device from them before, this is because this one is a non-5G model. This is just uh, the G96 powered one and it is a 4G LTE. This is the M4, again, uh, powered by a 64 megapixel sensor as the primary sensor on the back. So a slightly different experience between the two. 5,000 milliampere on both of them, um, although the charging speed is up to basically 67 watts here on the uh, Poco X4 Pro. Uh, and what we get here is a 33 watt charger with the M4 Pro. As far as the displays, we have a 6.4 inch display here on the M4 Pro, as opposed to the 6.67 inch display on the right here on the X4 Pro. Um, 120 hertz AMOLED display uh, as far as the resolution and refresh rate and of course here we have 1080p as well. On the left 1080p AMOLED display as well but only up to 90 hertz. So 90 hertz 1080p uh, refresh rate here as opposed to 120 hertz uh, with the Snapdragon variant. So the 695 and the G96 have that little bit of a difference between the two. Uh, RAM and storage configuration are going to basically vary depending on the market that you're in. Uh, the experience overall what we're getting here again is a MediaTek centered experience. 1080p 30 frames per second is going to be the best resolution video that we're going to get from both uh, the front facing and the back facing sensors and we're definitely going to get a chance to check that out. We have the Google feed sitting here on the left uh, we of course have applications you can download google play services installed on both of these devices direct access to the uh, app store directly and of course there are pre-installed applications as this is again running the poco launcher built into this um, if we go ahead and bring down the notification panel we have obviously very similar to what we've seen with poco devices uh, on the right side we have the kind of like configuration section we are able to open up the uh, toggles as well if we swipe up to the left we are obviously greeted with the notification uh, of all the notifications that are sitting there we're running miui 13 on both of these devices 13.0.5 on the uh, on the x on the m4 and 13.0.3 on the m4 on the x4 um, although it's still technically running on android 11 so unfortunately no um, you know android 12 yet but hopefully in the near future uh, we have 128 gigs of internal storage both of them supporting sd card expansion slots so you're definitely going to be able to get more storage into these devices um, on the top for both of them we have a second series speaker here to be able to give us the stereo speaker experience ir blaster as well as a headphone jack on these and of course on the bottom we have the secondary speaker as well the dual sim slots uh, on the x4 is on the bottom on the x4 is on the, on the m4 is on the side and of course a microphone um, overall experience is very similar slightly bigger display bigger uh, footprint uh, the camera array on the back would look very very similar with the exception of the fact that this is obviously a bigger design i like the design here on the x4 with the 5g capabilities uh, unfortunately in the us we do not have that 5g so we're connecting at lte at best uh, but it should still be a pretty decent experience for those to both of these devices uh, they both feature a power a fingerprint sensor with a power button com uh, combined on the right side so you're definitely not going to be worried too much uh, with uh, unlocking issues with this device as it'll actually run pretty smoothly Unfortunately, both of them are super uh, magnets uh, when it comes to fingerprints and you're actually, you actually do have a free case that comes in the box. So I'd definitely personally recommend you using that. Now, as far as the camera stack, for the most part, the main sensor is the big difference between the two. 108 as opposed to 64, but the secondary and tertiary sensor are basically an eight ultra wide and a two megapixel macro lens on both of them that basically pretty much uh, is a mirrored experience. The front facing camera, as I mentioned to you guys, is a 16 megapixel sensor on both of these devices and it is a center punch hole camera style. So uh, overall experience, Experience, it's really depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for more of a gaming, uh, better performance, I feel like the X4 Pro is definitely shooting for a much higher, uh, you know, I would say a much higher uh, requirement because for the price point that it's coming at, uh, at this point, realistically, the performance is really nice. Now, as far as performance on both of these devices, I ran Geekbench on both of the systems. Let's go ahead and open up the history. Um, overall, performance is what you'd expect. The G96 performed about 526 single, 1865 on multi-core. The 695, as you can imagine, at the higher end of the 6 series is 677 with 2048. Uh, due to that, we're able to get slightly different experiences up to 120 hertz refresh rate as opposed to 90 frames per second. Uh, both of them, by default, out of the box are set to be at 60 frames per second so all you need to do uh, jump directly into the settings tab jump go all the way down to display 
And of course, go ahead and check out the refresh rate. Uh, by default, again, both of them support 60 frames and that's what they're set at uh, out of the box. Configuring them up to 120 or 90 will definitely be very simple from here. Uh, keep in mind, 90 hertz is definitely still a very good improvement overall from going from 60 frames per second. I feel like a lot of devices nowadays are all kind of shooting for 90 hertz at the bare minimum, which is definitely something that we can appreciate there. Uh, now, the fact that we don't have Android 12, I think this is something that we could definitely live with at this point. Uh, MIUI 13 still brings in a lot of features that we like and, of course, provides us a lot of good experiences. On the cameras that we have in here, as I mentioned to you guys, 1080p, 30 frames per second is literally going to be the best resolution we're able to get on either the, full, uh, either the 695 here or even uh, using the G96. So unfortunately, we do not have uh, any improvements on that. And of course, front-facing camera experience is very much the same. We're going to jump in real quick and do a quick sample of that. But we have a pro mode on both of them, video, photo, portrait mode. Under more, it does change a little bit between the two devices, as you can imagine. There's a couple of more features in here. Both of them feature in night mode, 108 or 64 megapixel primary sensor, full resolution, short video, panorama, of course, document, slow motion, time lapse. And of course, we also have long exposure and dual video. And that's one of the main benefits here for the 108 and of course the 695. So you definitely can take some nice uh, ex long exposure, like, you know, lights, especially at night. And I did take some pictures of those uh, while we were at Disneyland not that long ago. I took both of these guys. Uh, and of course I was rocking a lot of phones with me at this Disneyland trip. So uh, let's go and do a quick uh, front facing and back facing sensor camera experience on both the M4 and the X4. Okay, we're gonna start off with the front facing camera on the X4. Similar experience, 1080p 30 frames per second on both front and back sensors. Uh, we should obviously be able to get a better experience on the back. Overall, good example, audio video. Again, let's go ahead and do a quick, uh, well, actually let's switch over to the main sensor, the 108 on the back. Okay, 108, this is pretty much it. The best resolution we're able to get here is out of this main sensor. Now I will say though, you're able to shoot 1080p 30 frames per second out of the ultra wide as well, but then at that point you're dropping down to an eight megapixel camera. So the experience I would probably say is for best, again, just use the main sensor on the back. The 695 should be able to handle everything we do, again, at 1080p at best. And overall, it will still provide us a better video than the front-facing camera. Even though technically we're at the same resolution, you're just using a better source. So that's, again, the best thing to do. Live in the 108 on this phone, on the X4 Pro. We're going to start off with the Poco M4. And of course, this is 1080p resolution, front-facing camera, the uh, overall the best performance that we can get here. Now, although we are able to get the same technical resolution from the main sensor on the back, we are using a better sensor. So let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor here, the 64 megapixel sensor on the M4, and see how the image and the audio comes out from there. Now we're on the main sensor on the back. The M4 has a 64 megapixel sensor. 1080p 30 frames per second, again, is the same resolution that we're able to get. But my hope essentially is that the video is a little bit better for us. And of course, the experience will always be best with the best sensor that you have, which is always facing the other way. So. Again, M4, 1080p 30 on the front, 1080p, well, 1080p 30 on the back. And as you saw there, the audio and video are actually pretty decent for the price point for what this device can offer us. Um, overall, again, the main sensors on the back are going to give you the best resolution, even though it's technically 1080, it still has a much bigger sensor and it pulls in a little bit more better light than what we have on the front. It's again, 16 megapixel versus 64 and 108. So there, there's definitely a lot of differences there. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a quick audio comparison between the two. Now, again, I'm not trying to put them head to head, making it sound like one is better than the other. It is a different experience. And if you're going for a slightly more budget friendly, I feel like the M4 will do very well. The X4 will definitely do a little bit better again because of the 695, we're able to get slightly better experiences. But both of them are featuring stereo speakers. So we have the volume sitting at 100% for both these devices. Let's go ahead and start off with the M4. So definitely it sounds pretty decent, uh, not very bassy as far as the sound. So you could definitely hear that at the highest level, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of good bass into it. So let's see how the MX, well, the X4 does. Check it out. Definitely feels a little bit better on the bass levels there. And of course, a little bit louder as well. You can guys, you guys can let me know in the comments below. Uh, the overall experience here is definitely very uh, focused on either one of these guys and you're definitely going to be able to get a good gaming experience. One thing to keep in mind, this obviously is not a gaming centric device, uh, although we have 120 frames per second on the X4. Uh, the experience is also kind of limited by the, uh, the processor that we have in here. So as long as we understand the performance that we're getting here out of these two devices, we're definitely going to be very happy with what they offer us. Um, so I did install obviously PUBG Mobile. I do have obviously Netflix installed as well. 
there's a few games, additional games that were pre-installed out of uh, the box directly. And you can, of course, see some of the other recommendations. Now, surprisingly, if you are a PUBG fan, one thing I will say, though, there is a collaboration here uh, for a special skin that you're able to get directly because of this combo that you're able to get there. So once you have PUBG Mobile downloaded and installed, open up the application and make sure to pick up that code and then redeem it. For both the X4 and the M4, we're able to do that as well. I'm going to give you guys a quick sample right now of the gaming that I got directly on one of these guys. And of course, just overall experience of how these devices can perform for us. The main thing I would probably say is both of these devices offer us a very well-rounded experience at the price point that they're coming in. And I keep saying the word price point is because these are trying to give us a bang, well, a bang for the buck type of an experience. You're not paying a lot of money, but you're getting a lot of features. Now, no 5G support on the M4. That's different than the one we saw before. But the main benefit that we have in here essentially is that the X4 is providing us, again, a slightly more upper middle uh, performance type of experience on a smartphone for a really good budget friendly fr uh, price. Uh, Poco, as you guys know, always puts out very good devices and, of course, very good uh, experiences. Um, I'm hoping MIUI uh, 13 with Android 12 will be coming out very soon. And, of course, I can see that these devices would definitely be able to run it very well. Um, overall, RAM storage configuration, I would definitely pick the one that fits you the best. But keep in mind, you can also expand the storage on both of these with an SD card. Uh, performance as far as on the cameras, as I'm showing you guys right there, uh, I'm going to show you guys, obviously, a sample from the first. Uh, I would go first, obviously, with the X4, and then I'll jump over to the M4. Uh, the overall experience, again, very nice. Long exposures on the, F on the X4 definitely looks really good. Images are clear, images are crisp, and I think that's some of the main benefits that I liked about this device. Uh, 108 megapixel is definitely strong. We're not able to shoot higher than 1080p, but again, when it comes to photography, I think this one does pretty well. The M4, again, very nice, very well-rounded device. Uh, the experience is, again, mirrored in here. Night mode works pretty decent. Uh, the overall performance on here is, again, tailored a little bit lower than the X4. So if you're looking for the best experience, I would go for the X4. As you said, or as I mentioned before, 5G, 120Hz refresh rate. Uh, you also have a higher megapixel camera and a faster uh, charging with the 67 watt charger that's in the box. Uh, the M4 gives us a very well-rounded experience. And of course, I forgot to mention the X4 has 5G as well. Uh, in market in certain markets in the US we weren't able to get that uh, but as far as the M4 definitely a very good budget device if you're looking to save a little bit of money and provide you a very decent well-rounded experience with MIUI 13. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below thank you very much to Poco for allowing me to check out both the M4 and the X4 I'll see you guys in the next video take care for now